Hi there, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. And this is the second edition of Wordy Wednesday, the first edition that's really going to contain any content. So, I've been perplexed as to what include in Wordy Wednesdays. And my girlfriend's a bit of a nerd, I'm a bit of a geek, um, so that kind of works out. One of us could be a dork, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, there's a whole context and continuum of nerdiness, it's kind of like a bell curve. Um... So, she had a board game uh, called Ticket to Ride. <clears throat> I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not being paid by them. I'm not being promoted by them. But it's something that I accidentally encountered, like a little kind of Bob Ross happy accident. Um, and this is something that would be great for someone that has had a brain injury, is having communication deficits, uh, and... We'll just talk about it. So this is called A Ticket to Ride. It's a board game, right? And it's made by, I believe, the lovely people at Days of Wonder. You can find them at www.daysofwonder.com. See, it says so right there, right? So Ticket to Ride's a, oh, let me put that away. Sorry, Ticket to Ride's a board game. It's a board game that involves, you pick a color, Unfortunately, someone always picks purple, not me. Um, and then that's your color of your space. You then have to draw three cards, and those cards are location cards. And you have to determine, how am I going to build a train from point A to point B? And that could be anywhere on the map. You then take turns, and during the turns, you draw cards, which will help you build trains. And then eventually, you're going to have a turn where you don't draw cards, but you're going to play a series of cards to build a train. So you have the cards that have a name on it, the cards that have a graphic on it, you've got the map that has names and graphic on it, you have color matching, you have sequence of order, you have multiple tasks, you have um, executive functioning. Like There are so many relevant, and fine motor, because you've got cards, and little movie things, and trains, and tokens, and whatever. Oh, and dinosaurs. There's dinosaurs, too. Um, so, um, so you have to think strategically how I'm going to play the hand I'm given, and, and so far as the routes I'm gonna, I've picked, because you, you get so many route cards, and you get to decide which ones you're going to keep. Have to keep just one, though. Okay. Then, you have to play through until someone has no train cars left. And depending on how many train cars you've played and how long each train is and how many objectives you've accomplished and so far as uh, tickets, tickets being you have to go from one place to another, uh, the game has many definitive and substantial benefits for those of us that have aphasia, be it expressive or receptive, that have anomia, um, verbal apraxia, not so much because you can't really control your mouth that muscles already. But let's look at it this way. I have expressive aphasia, which means I can't get words out. <clears throat> but I have a graphic card that says you're going from here to there, like Oslo to Helsinki for the game that we have, example. So it says Oslo on the card and it says Helsinki on the card. And then on the card, it also has the graphic map of approximately from where to where. Then if you look at the map, you then have Oslo and Helsinki. So you can match the symbols. You can match the language. Um, if you're having difficulty with um, receptive aphasia, meaning you're having difficulty bringing things in, um, again, that will help because you've got the words, you've got the graphs, you've got the map. You then have to color match. Every route is a color, be it um, green, red, black, and you have to find the right number of cards. So if you need to play a train uh, that is five green spaces long, you need to have at least five green cards in your hand, and then you can claim that train area. So when people start thinking about, well, what kind of rehab activities can I do? I'm going to say you can use gaming. Now, I don't mean like illegal betting or 
some underground risk fight club kind of deal where you're playing risk for money or you're gambling. I'm not talking about anything where you're going to possibly negatively impact your lifestyle. But I'm talking about let's have fun. Right? Why does a rehab and therapy activity have to look like rehab and therapy? Right? It doesn't. So a game such as, I'm just going to bend over to reach it again, Ticket to Ride, again, shameless plug, not sponsored. Not sponsored. Would like to be, but not. Right? So a game like Ticket to Ride, right, you have all the advantages. Let me just put that away. You have all the advantages of what you're going to do in a little bit in occupational therapy because there's some fine motor skills. Um, and, but a lot of it, what you're going to do with your speech and language therapist, right? There's going to be place names all over the map, right? You're going to have to be able to look at your card and go, oh, that says Oslo. Okay, great. And I've got to go to Murmansk, right? Well, ticket to ride, if you go to their website, www.daysofwonder.com, there's a Tokyo version, there's a Europe version, there's a Pennsylvania version, there's versions for places all around the world. So you don't have to get the one that, I display. You can get many ones. Um, if you want to play with the dinosaurs involved in the game to give it a bit of um, fun, you can extra fun, you can do that. You can play with just two people. You can even play against yourself just to see kind of, you know, just, just sort of like solitaire. But the wonderful thing is, is it has, the term is um, covert sensitization. Right? No, so I don't mean like covert, like Navy SEALs and the SAS and the CIA. Uh, and I don't mean sensitization like Pavlov. Um, what I mean by that is you're doing something unwittingly. You're doing something unknowingly. Right? You're preparing yourself without doing it formally. You're not sitting down with a word puzzle book and doing word puzzles. Also a valuable benefit. Uh, you could use a coloring book. Uh, you could use... You know, Scrabble, crosswords, watch Jeopardy, um, whatever the case may be. All of that is a form of covert sens sensitization. <sighs> yeah, buddy, it is. So you're playing a game. You're having fun. Uh, you are doing things specifically in this game. You're doing the color matching. You're doing place naming. So you've got some confrontational naming, right? Because it's on the card. It's on the map. You can look at it and go, Oslo, Oslo, Helsinki, Helsinki, right? Uh, you've got uh, the color matching. You've got order of operations. You've got some executive functioning going on. You've got multitasking. And you can take a route from anywhere to anywhere on the map. There's no, there's no definitive, you must go this way, you must go that way, right? And then you get the competitive part of it is you might want to play against your opponent. So if you see your opponent is about to take a certain path, even if you don't need it or not, because you want to be a dick. Um, not that I would ever do that, because that would be wrong. You might want to play against your opponent, just to make it a bit more difficult for them. Right? So, when we think of rehab activities, uh, therapeutic activities for uh, aphasia, uh, for anomia, uh, be that um, expressive aphasia or receptive aphasia, you don't have to do structured things. They don't have to look like therapy to be therapy, right? Um, if you're able to, you know, and, and you're not over overly sensory sensitive, you could do the same thing in a supermarket, you know, you know, walk down the aisles until you find the spaghetti sauce. And then I'm going to go look for, you know, peanut butter. And then I'm going to go look for whatever, right? Um, you could do it that way. That that could be a little challenging for some people. So you might want to stick to the game. So you could play anything like Monopoly, uh, Risk, um, Axis and Allies, Settlers of Catan, um, Ticket to Ride. Uh, again, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm just dropping names. That's it. So this is just a shameless plug for games. Any game that involves place naming, any game that involves uh, graphics, uh, any game that involves... Uh, matching could be, and I, I think you'll find, would be a beneficial therapeutic exercise. And the great thing is you get to exercise your communication skills. You get to exercise uh, your order of operation skills. 
you get to exercise your multitasking skills, you get to exercise color matching skills without it feeling like therapy. Okay, you, you get to spend half an hour with people you enjoy the company with, hopefully. Um, and if you don't, sorry. Uh, and you're having fun. You're just spending time doing really nothing at all. Just spending time playing a game. So when we start thinking about rehab activities, why do we have to have rehab to have rehab, right? It doesn't have to be structured. It doesn't have to be formal, but it has to be fun. Because ultimately, if you're not enjoying doing the thing that you're doing, you're probably not going to want to do it again. So when you went to physiotherapy for the first time, it sucked, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Except for you, yeah, you. No, no, you're trying to say it didn't suck. We know you're weird. Um, the first time you went to physiotherapy, it was an absolute nightmare. Your body's on fire, your brain's on fire, you're exhausted from just trying to do one simple exercise that six weeks ago was no problem at all. And then when you went to occupational therapy the first time, for me, it felt like my brain was on fire. They made me do all these, these tests of color matching and moving the objects, right? It felt like my brain was on fire because they were doing a formal, structured therapy routine, something that they're, they've got a book they have to work out of. Well, great thing is when we're at home, we don't have to work out of that book. The great thing is when we're at home, we can do the rehab and therapeutic activities that are the most beneficial for us. And why not just have fun doing it? You could make cookies as a therapeutic activity. Get the recipe out, right? Provided you don't need help or supervision because like you're unstable in the kitchen or you might chop a finger off or you'll forget you turned the oven on and you burn the cookies and the fire department shows up. Unless, of course, you want to meet a really cute fireman then, or fire person, fire lady, firefighting individual. Um, yeah, unless you want to meet a hot person in a firefighter's uniform, yeah, then burn the cookies. Um, otherwise, please don't. But, like, something just making cookies could be a therapeutic activity because you have to read the recipe. You have to go find the container. You have to measure out the things. You have to follow the order of operations. So when we start thinking about therapeutic activities for communication deficits after a stroke, a brain injury, or a concussion, why don't you think inside the box? Get it? Inside the box. Right? So you don't have to worry about what am I going to do for therapeutic activities today. Just think inside the box. That's my idea. But what do I know? I'm just a guy who had a stroke who historically at one point used to work with brain injury um, um, patients and clients as a rehab and therapy support worker. And I've got a YouTube channel. So if you happen to have been enjoying the content you've been watching, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you happen to know someone that's going through the throes of a brain injury recovery, be it from a stroke, a concussion, uh, an accident, however they happen to get their brain injury, please point the channel up to them. They might get some value out of the content I generate. If you happen to know someone that's supporting someone going through the throes of a post-stroke or post-brain injury recovery, again, please point the channel up to them. Like, share, subscribe. And if you happen to see someone uh, who appears to be immediately befuddled or confused or have lost their sense of balance, uh, someone who has uh, vision problems or having difficulty with their eyes, they can only see in grayscale. They can only see it in one eye. They only see a little dot in the world. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. They have a, a facial droop. There's a noticeable uh, slackening of the facial muscles. If uh, someone who has, um, they can't raise their arms equally effectively or at all. They can't smile equally effectively or at all. They have slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate uh, language for situation or context. Or if you notice you have difficulty understanding speech, right? Uh, if you have general body weakness or weakness on one side or has the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.